Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Warriors of Ritchie 3 Ultimate. I'm your host, Rian of Bahamut, and it is finally here, people. The Chapter 1 Finale. The goal we have been working towards. The Siege of Odawara Castle. We saved Ma Chao's people at Yi Ling, saved away the castle from Yuan Xiao and Dong Zhuo's armies, prevented Da Ji's schemes from causing us to kill each other at Dong Ko, saved Tai Gong Wong at Xiaochun Castle, and saved Hideyoshi and several other officers at the Battle of Nagashino. And it has all been for this battle. Today, we are breaking the siege with a team of Zhu Xu, Zhu Hong, and Tai Gong Wong. So let's do this. So, once again, we start off with the good old recap of stuff we already know. Ma Chao and Sima Zhao are off at Xiaochun and Nagashino raising hell while Hanbei is attacking Odawara Castle. This also brings up something I don't think I have ever talked about. Only Ma Chao, Sima Zhao, and Hanbei Takenaka are actually doing any time travel. Outside of their strategy meetings, the three are actually working completely separately with the people that they rescued. I bring this up because it took me a while to figure out they were actually working this way, mainly because of having to go back and talking to people in the main camp. I guess those are the future versions of the characters that show up in time travel back when in the player's party? そこ so we are pretty much going to be following Hanbei's plan throughout this level. Our first goal is to reach the blue officers in the lower right-ish part of the map, which doesn't really take long since there's only two red officers in our way. From there, we head to the castle, and then move out from there after we kill everything, to Kiyomori in the top left corner. And Daji and Kiyomori are actually participating in this battle together. Although in all honesty, Daji is doing most of the work, while Kiyomori just sits around in his camp looking menacing. While she is running around summoning demon soldiers all over the frickin' place. Also, Zhu Huang here is 10 kinds of awesome, being able to pick up and throw even the giant boar guys with his huge battle axe. Poor guy kinda gets screwed in the screen time department. We got him back in Dong Ko, and outside of appearing in the opening cutscene, he didn't really get any role in that battle. Even Dang Ai got to try and perform a boulder attack at some point during the mission. Gotta love his Maso attack as well. It took off two thirds of that officer's health, and it also killed everything else in the general area around him. Killing Dodo Meki there is supposed to be the trigger to opening the gate, but the game has decided we were too fast and we need to wait for it to drop plot and tension on us. やっちゃった。<笑> Get 
I do love how Kaguya just bams into the scene, magically taking out a ton of guides and just wordlessly bows her head and heads off to the next group of demons that need her special brand of bamboo and laser. Also, there are quite a few enemy officers in this location, and I actually start to get my ass kicked because quite a few of Taigon Wong's charge attacks have a bit of a wind up before they come out. So he said screw it and busted out Zushu and his awesome so attack. They leave a lot of the initial chaos after the Hydra showed up as a mystery and mentioned only in passing. Pretty much all the major leaders got killed by the Hydra as it appeared, and that's what Sun Chang Jiang was referring to as being forced to flee Wu. And Da Ji has realized we are here and a threat and decided playtime is over. So poor Masashi is getting swarmed at this point. And apparently taking a castle is just that easy. Poor Musashi doesn't even get a dramatic no or anything as he gets horribly killed by all the demons swarming him. And Kiyomori is also terrible at killing blows because opening that gate doesn't really do anything outside of giving Ding Fang a couple more officers to deal with that will never cause him to get to the point where the game will yell at me to save him. Here we get introduced to our first castle. They are actually pretty annoying to deal with on the thankfully rare occasion that they show up. Pretty much it is a maze of rooms and we don't get a decent overhead map to see where we need to go and they are several stories tall. I actually managed to get my ass lost here for a couple minutes the first time I played this level. Fortunately as I said Kiyomori is terrible at killing blows so I didn't actually lose the fight due to the delay. Also, Daji shows her superiority to Kiyomori again by having a plan to personally lure us into an important objective and then trying to ambush and kill us there rather than just ordering people to kill us while sitting in camp. Sure, it results in her getting a beatdown, but at least she is actively participating in the battle. Kinda sad that Da Ji doesn't have any dialogue in case you bring along Tai Gong Wong, due to them both being mystics and him kicking her ass in Shu's campaign in Warriors of Rochi 2. Now, watch in awe as I manage to get turned around a bit and find the upstairs instead of the downstairs. I guess I should be thankful that Dodgy decided to hang around on the second floor instead of the top floor or this really would have been a pain in the ass to run around in. This battle is also winding down pretty quickly here. The only other named character actively attacking us is Yoshihiro, and we will be dealing with him pretty quickly once we get over there. Of course, we still need to actually leave the castle through the same entrance I came in from so I don't end up getting lost again and then run all the way around it before we actually find Yoshihiro. And suddenly Xiao Kyo is here. I guess she came with Sun Cheng Jiang since Xiao is her brother's best friend's wife. Kinda wish they had actually made it known she was hanging around here fighting until I just so happened to run into her. They also kind of pulled this crap in Yi Ling with Wang Zhang. You would never have known he was on the field if you just went from the intro cutscene and who was actively talking during the battle. 
That was until Ma Dai suddenly says, We gotta go and save Master Wong Jong! Oh yeah, Ding Fang is here too! Yet another person who it would have been nice to know was hanging around at the start of the mission. Heck, like I mentioned earlier, he's the only person we would care about being on the front lines after Kiyomori declared his killing blow way back when Musashi died. Also, no one has yet to comment on poor Musashi's death. Hell, Ding Feng's location is just across the river from Musashi's, and one of Ding Feng's big things is being eloquent with flowery language. And he didn't even try to give some big flowery eulogy on how his comrade's death will be avenged. If he was still alive, I think he would need a hug from how much his allies don't seem to care about him. In more recent news, Yoshihiro has declared it hammer time, much to the chagrin of all those around him. In response, Tai Gong Wong has decided it's time to go fishing for dumbasses and soundly beats Yoshihiro, Hook, Lying, and Seeker. And yes, Yoshihiro is now on our team because he seems to enjoy being on the side that seems to be losing. And pretty much the entire center of the map has proven to be fairly pointless. I never had to take a step in there and everyone fighting in that area doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of this battle. And once again I managed to completely whiff with a Maso attack. Now, there is only one officer between me and Kiyomori and finally ending this battle over Odawara Castle. Uh, make that two officers because Keiji Maida has decided to crash the party. He is kind of a big deal in combat since in the original Samurai Wars, he was supposed to be the Samurai Wars equivalent of Lubu, but that role got taken away from him by Tatakatsu Honda but that doesn't mean he has lost any of his fighting skill. Also, well-placed Gold Scroll is well-placed and lets me get a few more levels on Zhu Huang before we confront Keiji. I don't really get the best look at Keiji here due to being in combat and all, but he looks like he is built like a brick wall and he has some pretty cool looking face paint like a Kabuki warrior. He is pretty much the last of the characters who is willing to work with the demon army in the previous games. And here's Kiyomori once again. The usual strategy applies here of using Maso attacks to weaken him up for a triple strike and then attacking him as usual for whatever is left. This strategy is pretty effective against anything the game throws at you short of the Hydra. Heck, you can always just go with busting out all three characters' missiles and watching the fireworks. Oh, crap. And that's why you have to be very wary of the enemy's Maso attacks. So, that never happened. What really happened is that I unloaded on him with all of my Maso attacks and a triple strike. Because leaving a character out without a Maso attack to use as a defense against an opponent who can one-shot you would just be a silly, silly move. Oh. 
And two shoes, Maso, is all we need to finish off this annoying demon man. もう、いつ帰ってきても大丈夫なんですよ。うん。なんとかなったな。援軍に来てくれてありがとう。おかげで親方様のルスを守ることができたわ。その未来から来たとか、ちょっと信じられないけど。星を信じよう。そのような手札
And then you select an officer and they hold this big party that makes them more popular with the rest of the army. It might not seem like all that great a use for gems, but there is a point to it that I'll get into in a second. First, we have a couple more events to unlock a few battles. あの I swear, Yoshihiro and Jotai are so hard to hear. Hi. <laughs> So, like with Wang Zhang, we now had the battles to rescue Lian Chi and Musashi Miyamoto. We have also unlocked another side mission, but its requirements are a bit different than the rest. This is the level select screen that I have been cutting out for streamlining purposes. All the square symbols are main plot missions and the circles are the side missions. This mission in particular is the weird one. Instead of having certain characters in the party, we need to have certain characters, namely Ginchio Tachibana, Sun Cheng Jang, and Zhao Qiao reach this first level of bond in order to unlock, and that's where the tea house comes in handy to give the levels a bit of a boost. Normally I just wait till chapter 4 to do these missions when the last tea house upgrade comes in, and instead of paying a ton of money to boost everyone's bond with a specific character, you can just pay a much cheaper fee to increase it between two specific characters at a much greater rate. However, this is an LP, so I will be trying to unlock these missions ASAP, so I get to do it the old fashioned way. With either off screen grinding, probably at a way to castle with everyone in the same team, or paying out my nose at the tea house. I will probably do something like alternating side missions with story missions so the plot doesn't get too derailed, but this is about the point where a lot of side missions start piling up, so we shall see how this goes. Well that's it for this info dump, I hope you will all join me again next time when we dive right into chapter 2 as we begin to make our move. I'm Rihanna Bahamut and thank you all for watching.